Yeah, hello everybody. This is our first Rugby Nation for 2020 and yeah, you guessed it, we're doing it via Zoom. We've got one of the Brumbies leading players dialed in from, I'm going to get you in a second, Lockie McCaffrey, work out where you are. Beth Newman, rugby.com.au, head journal as well. Lockie McCaffrey, hit me. You're moving house at the moment? Yeah, mate. Thanks for having me, Shawnee and Beth. Um, we've just moved house yesterday, so I should have texted you, mate, to come up, come down to Canberra and lend me a hand, but we've... Um, just got a place in Wallaroo. It's actually on the New South Wales side of things. Bit of acreage made out of the city. Um, and yeah, big moving day yesterday. Got the family up to help. Um, Alan went missing, mate, for a few hours. <laughs> but he's moved in into the, the main bedroom, mate, last night. And um, woke up this morning to the birds chirping, mate. And very nice view out here. So can't be happier. Not a bad place to spend a bit of isolation time, Lockie, in the, at, among the birds. Yeah, it's um, the last few weeks um, has been tough just doing a little bit of training by myself or in, in pairs. Um, so, yeah, at least it gives me a bit of time now. I don't like sitting on the couch for too long, so it gives me a bit of time out here to, to get started. We're getting, we're getting a delivery of maybe 20 steers, on Thursday, so that would give me a bit of work to do, and um, I've got my hands full with with my little daughter and, and unpacking for the next week or two. So hopefully by the time we've unpacked and settled, it's time to play some more footy. Hang on a second. So you've got Alan Alatoa as a almost like a housemate now. Yeah. So, mate, I thought you know I looked at all the boys and I thought job security is on a four year deal. Um, Let's let's be honest. He's he's not <laughs> scraping at the barrel to pay rent or bills, so he's a pretty safe choice there, mate. He's got the he's got the main bedroom. His view his his window looks out onto the the forty acres, mate. He's, he's um I've told him the deal is if I'm away, he's got to look after the animals and and um, do the jobs, mate. And his partner they're getting married end of the year, and she's a lovely girl. She's moving up, so um, even if he's playing up, mate, I know that she's here to look after the joint. Knowing how much Alan Alatoa eats, there's a very good chance a couple of those steers are missing if you leave him alone with them. They'll end up on a spit somewhere. Mate, they, um, <laughs> we're going to go get one or two pigs this week. Um, and I said, you can touch the pigs, mate, but not the steers. <laughs> what about Scotty CEO? We've seen uh, he's obviously good mates with, with Alan and he's been giving house tours for the Brumby social media Team, I don't think I could imagine anyone more annoying to live with than Scott CO. Who would your worst pick be for being stuck in isolation within the Brumbies camp? Mate, I'm not saying this because you just mentioned it, but I could think of nothing worse than living with Scotty too, mate. He talks about himself 24-7. <laughs> um, he's, he's very anal with where things go and what happens. And um, I feel sorry for Falau. He lives with him and... Um, Mate, Falau spends, he gets the training three hours early and leaves three hours late just so he doesn't have to go <laughs> home and, and see him. So, um, luckily, Scotty's place, I think they've got three levels to the house. So, they pretty much just stand their own level and meet each other. They probably spend more time at training than they do at home. But um, there's a few blokes that would annoy me, mate, in isolation. I reckon Joey Powell would get on my nerves, little halfbacks. Um but Scotty would Scotty would take the cake, mate, for that one. I um I can't deal with blokes talking for themselves for longer than two or three minutes. So spending a few days with him would, would make me go crazy. A lot of third person stuff. Hey Beth, uh, let's get a word from you now before Lockie jumps in as well. You've been across what the potential reshaping of the competition might look like through rugby.com.au after corona subsides what have you got for us on that front and then we'll let Lockie chime in and give uh, give it from a player's perspective yeah I mean obviously super rugby as we know it's probably looking very unlikely um, at this stage given what are we in April now and um, the finals are supposed to be played in June so a lot of the focus I think has shifted to, to either setting up some sort of domestic competition with the Western Force and maybe even the Sunwolves coming into Australia or a trans-Tasman competition with the New Zealand teams, depending on, on those travel bans. Um, but then the next question is as well, what does test rugby look like? So, you know, we're getting into, you know, April now. July test was supposed to be happening in, you know, the start of that month, and, and it's still not clear exactly what's going to happen. And, um, you know, if you listen to what, what's being talked out of Europe and, and um, you know, some of the Southern Hem Hemisphere nations as well, 
um, you know, there's a lot of uncertainty and doubt over whether, you know, there could be any test played at all this year. Locke, what do you got? What are you guys preparing for at the moment? Yeah, we're, then we're preparing for footy as, as soon as possible, and that's all we can control. In terms of thought about competition, uh, you know, it's it's just a really good opportunity to put something together to try something this season, I think, personally. Um, I haven't talked to many of the, the boys about it. Um, obviously, I haven't seen some of the boys since, since we got told we had to go home and, and train in isolation, so that's been hard, but um, I think it's a great opportunity for Australian rugby to to try something interesting, new. You know, there's been a lot of uh, negativity about um, the, the games against South African teams or Argentinian teams. And as players, um, you know, I've always loved touring over there and, and playing some in some of the great stadiums you get to play in. Um, and the and the Jaguars have a great team too. And you want to beat the you know beat the best to to be the best in the Southern Hemisphere tournaments and, and they're, they're always up there. So there's a lot of positives in, in, in whatever competition they put together. But I think the, the priority should be putting together a competition that the viewers really want to watch and get behind. Um, and if that's a Australian only competition with the Western force back in, then, then so be it. And, and um, let, let's have a crack. And all we, all we're worried about is, um, winning whatever competition we're put back into, and that was our that was our goal since day one preseason. Boys have worked so hard, and to to be going so well in the competition and that that stored um, was really disappointing. You don't have to give the answer to this, neither do your teammates. But what do your friends and family want to watch? I guess that's the more pertinent question. What do people that you know who love rugby? They've obviously got a loved one who does his thing professionally in the code in the country what do they want to see mate i think the majority of, of views is they want to watch australian derbies um and over the last few weeks with all the talk in, in social media and competition i've been thinking about it a lot too and personally i love watching australian derbies too um you know blokes or you know for your, the punters out there they've gone to school with someone or their cousin knows someone you You've got that affiliation. You've got that connection to the players you're actually watching on television, um, and that's what I think's things quite special in in terms of Australian derbies. You, you're playing for spots. Um, you know, there's been some cracking Australian derbies so far this year, and I thought, um, you know, some of the teams, the Reds, um, ourselves, playing some really, really attacking, interesting, you know, interesting footy that viewers can get behind too. Um, and we've got so many good players in Australia too. I, I think a lot of people get scared having Australian derbies because they think, oh, you know, they won't be as good quality as South African derbies or New Zealand derbies. But I think it's rubbish. And I wouldn't be worried having an Australian conference at all. I think um, at the end of the day, the, the viewers, the supporters are the most important thing in our game. And, and if they want to watch more Australian derbies, if they want to get behind an Aussie conference system, um, then I would love to be playing in one. And, um, I think winning a, winning a trophy to be the best in Australia is you'd get just as much joy out of it as winning, um, you know, a, a different style, beating the Jaguars or beating a South African or New Zealand team too. And I mean, you guys had such a great start to Super Rugby this year. I mean, if they did decide to kind of restart a comp and have a, that, that domestic format, how would you feel about potentially having to start from scratch or, you know, how do you keep that momentum going? Yeah, that's... that's uh, um, problem that the trainers and coaches um, have probably been thinking about over the last month. At the end of the day, we would have no issue starting back to scratch in whatever tournament we're put into. Um, you know, it's a shame that, you know, we were coming second place to the Sharks and that had one extra game than us. Um, so we're in a good position, but a lot happens in, in a season of footy and, and we, you know, we hadn't got to finals yet. Um, we just want to play footy and win something. And if that means starting at scratch and playing in a shortened season, then so be it. Um, I don't think the boys are worried about that at all. The, the main worry is just not getting back and playing any footy. Speaking of winning something, one of the things that we've seen bouncing out across the last few weeks here on rugby.com.au is these classic games. 
So good, Lockie McCaffrey. And you're going to have to bear with me for a second because the one that bounced out at the weekend was your team, the Brumbies, dealing it to the Crusaders in the 2004 decider down in Canberra. I'll just get you to talk under some of the highlights of this because 2004, how old were you then, fella? Quite young. I was, I was 14 and I actually think I was in... We'd come down, I was playing for Eastwood and we came down to Canberra. We didn't have tickets, but we were down in Canberra that weekend. And those are, some of the highlights from that game is incredible, mate. Some of the skill level by by Georgie Smith and Gerardo and that. The opening of that game, I'm sure you can remember, was just extraordinary. So packed house down in, uh, in Canberra and the Brumbies jumped out so hard and fast. It was Gerardo, I think Mark Gerard with the first half hat trick. My favourite one of the three was was the break down the left hand side with Radiki and and Georgie Smith had about seventeen touches made and then finished it off with a little I think it was left foot too. He's a right footer, but just to just to show off, mate, he put a little left foot for Gerardo in the left corner. That's I think that's my favourite try of the game. Um, and the freak we all love, George Smith, just um, just playing games with the with the Crusaders, mate. Yeah, well, I mean, just on that, I mean, what about how good that, that team was from 2004 as well? Like, some of the names in that Brumbies outfit back then were just ridiculous. Yeah, mate, I think you're spot on. I think um, the last five or six years, Brumbies have, have struggled to put, um, you know, get more than kind of eight to ten Wallabies, where this team probably had 14 or 15 Wallabies in the team. And um, not, not trying to compare teams or eras, mate, but... I'd love it this season to continue, mate, because I don't know the Wallabies' criteria for selection, etc. But I think um, if the Brumbies didn't get, you know, 10 to 15 Wallabies in that starting squad, mate, um, I think I would have been surprised. I think a lot of the boys are putting their hand up. First of all, just playing really good footy, but also playing a really skillful brand of footy that I'm sure guys like Scott Wiseman, Matty Taylor and, and um, Dave Rennie would like to have in their squad. Yes, we know a lot of the, the guys that are pretty established down there, but who are those guys maybe from the Brumbies that you reckon might be, you know, outside chances or people that, you know, maybe do their work without getting much recognition? Oh, I think there's a few guys. I, I think from so far this season, someone like Pete Samu has been incredible. I think the athleticism he shows in a game and the, the things he creates um, as a back rower, He's really taken it to a new level this this season, and I think he's been the the standout back rower um, in Australian rugby. And I don't say that um, without genuinely thinking about um, some other great back rowers in Australia. Just as um, the the Reds number eight is, I love the kid. Um, yeah, Harry Wilson. He's phenomenal. Harry Wilson. He's he makes about forty five carries a game. <laughs> he's tough as nails. Um, I'm a big fan of Harry. Um, but I just think Pete's experience coming back from from a successful Crusaders team, and he's got a, you know, he's got athleticism that not many um, forwards, um, especially me, can um, <laughs> can show off. So I think his his name's got to be right in there. Um, I think our our front row again with Allen and and Slips and Scotty and Falau, um, Connell off the bench have been doing a great job. I think Robbie Valentini. Dan and Dan and Laurie um, have done a great job. Peter Hewitt um, working on his skills over pre-season. I came back from Japan and um, his skill level has has tripled or quadrupled since last year. Um, and as we all know, he can run over anyone that's in front of him. So guys like him, I think Ira Simone's had a great season so far. Um, really controlling that back line with Noah um, and someone like Tom Wright and and Banksy and Andy Millhead. We've got so many. So many good attacking players in the team. Um, I'd be disappointed if I don't get to see some of those guys in a gold jersey um, in the next 12 months. What do you reckon about the guys who went through that World Cup campaign? It was a tough campaign. It was a tough couple of years in terms of results and that sort of stuff. Have you noticed uh, some of those blokes have sort of freshened up a little bit through the... I mean, obviously now nobody's playing, but even before we had a break, had some of those guys sort of freshen up again and then being ready to launch that next run, do you think? Because a few of them, without naming any, looked mentally stale, I think, at the end of that World Cup campaign because it did take so much out of them. Have those experienced guys and blokes who put plenty out there turn the corner a little bit on that refreshment front? 
Yeah, I think you're spot on, mate. I, I know from a Brumbies perspective, um, then, mate, uh, you, you look at our... You can tell me if I'm wrong, but you look at our back line and no one um, played in those World Cup games. Tavita, I think, played one game. And then you you look at our forward pack and there was no one apart from just the guys in the front row. And even Falau didn't really get any game time. So in terms of guys coming back to Super Rugby a little bit, um, you know, uh, not ready, we didn't really have that problem. You, you talk about guys like Alan, Scotty and Slips and, they were, our, you know, the main guys in the World Cup for the Brums. From what I can see, you know, and, and Alan had, um, which was rightly given to him, the, the captaincy belt. So I think that really gave him a, a spark in his step coming back and having something different to, to lead the boys out. And I think he's done a tremendous job, mate. I, I, um, we've been blessed with some good leaders here with Christian and, and Karts, etc. cetera. But... Um, I couldn't talk highly enough of, of Alan as a captain, both on and off the field. Um, and then you've got guys like Scotty's had a bit of an injury with his hand, but Slips is playing some of the best footy he's ever played, mate. Um, and he will tell you that himself, I think. I think he, he calls himself at training a, a fine red, mate. He just keeps getting better with age. And he's he's, um, he's in good nick, mate. I, I caught up with him in this isolation period to, to have a run with him. And I've never seen him fitter, mate. Um, he looks like he's been up on the Gold Coast running sand hills and <laughs> and tanning, mate. But he he um he's an ultimate professional, mate, and that's why he's had such a great career he's had. So we're lucky to have those leaders and experienced guys up front. Um, but we probably didn't have the same problem what you're talking about with a lot of the Rebels and Waratahs guys playing in that World Cup and finishing. You get you get what I mean, night. though, don't you? With some of them, because they just had to. I mean, they emptied the tank for so long, they just they didn't look themselves in the early part of Super Rugby. I, yeah, I agree. I agree, mate. I, I think, um, you know, I don't like talking about other players and other teams, but, um, you know, Hoops, Hoops looks buggered every game, the amount of work he puts into his body. Um, but he's always he's always starring for that Waratahs team, mate. Um, I think it was um, good to see Rob Simmons get a leadership role and, and a, something that, um, could drive him this year. Um, you know, people that have stood out to me, someone like Lucan at the Reds, um, I think someone like him is someone you're talking about that he's playing some excellent footy up at the Reds. Um, I think it's important what you're saying. When when guys come back from Wallaby travel where things don't go as well, they are really they get really excited to actually go back and play super. And um, we're lucky we've had a great bunch of young guys that have really upped the standard, guys like Noah and Ira and, and Righty, who um, they've kind of set the level. And guys like Alan and Slips and Scotty have come back from a disappointing World Cup and, and just been refreshed with all the energy that some of these young boys um, have brought. So I know that the Brumbies guys have done that really well um, in terms of those young guys just um, lifting the standards and, and bringing energy every day. And I know... Um, I've never, in, I'm, I'm not the best trainer, mate, but I've never enjoyed <laughs> training as much as the environment that the coaches and trainers and boys have created it down here in Canberra at the moment, mate. And, uh, you know, talking about training and things, I mean, in isolation, we've seen a few boys roll out the trick shots and, and different things all over the place. And um, I'm not sure if you caught the Quade Cooper, uh, what, the QC challenge, I think he's dubbed it, the flick passes yep. up in up in Brisbane this week. Um do you, who do you reckon could maybe rival that, or do you reckon you could you could have a go at those kind of skills, Lockie? Oh, I I, I don't think I could um, get someone to film me. But no, I to be <laughs> honest, I have absolutely zero chance um, to do some of the things that Quade does. Um, we played him in Japan, and he's I've always loved watching Quade play rugby. It's got you know he's refreshing kind of guy to watch. Um, never holds back, but. There's been some great isolation tricks out there. Um, the only tricks going on at this house is Alan finishing four or five cheeseburgers in less than 60 seconds or little eating challenges that he likes to do, but he doesn't let me film them or, or post them on social media. So there's not much, um, there's nothing interesting going on here at the digs. Sorry, guys, but um, I'll let some of those other highly profile social media guys um, run the show while we're in isolation. I'll just stick here on the farm, just chilling out. Can we set up a challenge between Taniela Tupo and Alan Arla told us he could knock over the most cheeseburgers in one oh. sitting? 
Mate, I'll pay for them. I would love that. I'll pay for them. I don't care. Yeah. (laughs) <laughs> Mate, I think the whole rugby community get behind that and pay for it. Um, <laughs> I'm told, be- hey, just on that, I'm told that uh, another great Eastwood man in Matt Dunning once hit Sutton Forest on a when we used to play Sydney Shoot Shield and incorporated the Vikings yeah. playing with the Woodies. I'm told that Tucky managed to put away 20 cheeseburgers in one stop. Mate, I played with him down at the Wood Dome and he. Um, He's in phenomenal nick now, mate. But there are a few years there towards the end of his career. I think he probably had a few too many cheeseburgers. But not trying to give Sutton Forest a plug, mate. mate. But how good is that little stop up, mate? Sensational. Well, I think there's been a few rugby boys stop into that Sutton Forest. <laughs> well, uh, look, we're going to see you. You're going to keep doing your thing with the Brumbies. You're at the moment doing some isolation videos and crosses yourself, aren't you? Yeah, so just to... Um, you know, everyone's a little bit bored at home, especially kids on school holidays and, and doing school from home. So we've we started with slips. Um, then we, we tuned over to the UK um, and chatted to Whitey down in down in Exeter. He's excited to get back. Um, and then we're going to throw it up this, this week, maybe with Ridey or young Ray. Um, he should probably still be at school, but um, down here, young 18-year-old. So if there's any... I know that guys have been getting on the on the Brumby socials and, and just seeing what they want to hear or who they want to talk to. But, um, yeah, just another way to keep busy during this isolation period, mate. Nice one. Uh, we'll keep an eye on that. Actually, just quick, very quickly, can you reach out to Benny Alexander? He seems desperate for contact at the moment. He's trying to reshape the entire direction of rugby, not just in Australia, but worldwide. So either he's lobbying for the top, top gig somewhere or just wants to speak to someone. Maybe you can touch him with Benny A. I will, mate. I, I would say I could go down to the dock, but the poor bloke, it's closed at the moment. So I might have to invite him over to the farm. But, mate, he was like that when he played, mate. We would be training and we'd be talking about, oh, this rule's crap, this rule's good, this rule's so, mate. He's always he's always scheming, mate, old Desi. <laughs> nice one. And, Beth, we've got uh, rugby.com.au. You've got some big classic games coming this weekend as well. Yeah, absolutely. Um, every week you can vote for a classic Super Rugby game or a classic Wallabies game, and um, there's some absolute crackers. So keep an eye on our Facebook page and make sure you vote for the game that you want to see. Nice one. Lockie, we're going to let you go put padlocks on every one of the cupboards in the house that has your food in it so Alan Alatoa doesn't get his hands on it. And we will uh, check in and see you next time.